Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on the beautiful channel, on the beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, we're talking about the beautiful bubble sword, which isn't that efficient and beautiful, uh, but uh, it's still okay. It's still an alright way to sort small amount of numbers. Now, if you haven't watched the last video, please do. This is, an, this is a video about optimizing bubble sword. Now, optimization means to make something as efficient as possible on the resources you have, basically. So, we want to make bubble sword as efficient as possible on our resources. Now, bubble sword itself isn't that efficient or optimized as a sorting algorithm, but we that doesn't mean we can't optimize bubble sort as much as possible. Uh, so there are many, many different versions of this, but I'll show you the few that I know. So one version is this. Now, if I run this old bubble sort, we get number of comparisons 91, and we get a sorted array. And the number of times this loop has to run is quite a bit 247 times all right now I found an okay way to show you guys this what happens after every run now every time we swap something I want to print it out so number of elements and I'm just gonna say std see out let me just see if I'm recording yes I am std c out and and then we're gonna say array at position j we're gonna change this to j now because we already have an I. Here we go. And we're just going to do a little space there. And at the end of every run, I just want to print a new line. Boom. And let me just print this out for you guys and girls. So let's see what's happening. Now, the way bubble sort works, that's a lot of runs right there. It works like this. It checks if 10... This is just a recap. If 10 is bigger than 20, we'll swap them. It wasn't. Okay, so we don't do anything that run. Next run... If 30, is 20 bigger than 30? No, we don't do anything that run. Is 30 bigger than 2? Yes, swap them. Boom. So 2 and 30 swap places. Okay, next. Uh, that was one swap. Now, uh, is 30 bigger than 6? Yes, swap them. Boom. 6 is here, 30 is here. And then is 30 bigger than 50? No, is 50 bigger than 3? Yes, swap them. Boom. See, every time. So it's going to kind of get all the big numbers to the back see how it kind of gets all the fat big numbers to the back and that's the way it sorts boom 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 so we can pretty much guarantee that the biggest number in the sorted array is going to be at the back all the biggest numbers are going to be at the back so after every successful run we can guarantee that we'll have the biggest number at the back and a successful run is when that number has gotten to the back of it. So once it's looped through the whole thing up until here, that's one big for loop, right? Uh, oh, that's the big while loop until it's at the back. So once we're here, one whole run has been completed, one pass, that 50 is going to be at the back. So what we can do is number of elements minus minus here. That means that we won't, the next run, we won't go as far in the for loop because we know that the last element is already sorted. So we'll do that. And once this is done again, there's going to be the next biggest element is going to be next to that, next to the end of the array. Then we'll drop it down one more and we'll keep going. Now, if I show you this in drawing or in, uh, in effect here, what you see is once this pass is done, it doesn't care about the last one anymore it, it, it's still there but it doesn't care about it in the for loop so it's just gonna go to the 7 and it wants the 50 is there again the biggest number and then it runs another pass and then 30 is gonna be there and then the 33 blah 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 blah, blah and we'll get to this and number comparison is still 91 because we still do as many switches but the for loop doesn't have to run as much so if I show you that this for loop it won't run as much so if we do that it'll just run 169 versus 274 or 47 or whatever it was so it's a lot less so that's a way to optimize it quickly now this isn't still not the most optimized version the one I'm about to do might not either be the most optimized version so this is all part of one version I'm just gonna take that away there is a quicker way to write a bubble sort with um, a little bit of an optimization done to it so what we do then is we make two for loops and we make another for loop just copy this whole thing here and we'll call this J 
and I'll explain whatever I'm doing. J is equal to I. Change this to J, change this to J. It also goes to number of elements. And boom. Now, if array at position, whoops, um, I equal is bigger than array at position J, then we're gonna uh, swap array I array J. All right, just like that. Now, this will sort my array, hopefully. It did sort it, all right? If I do number of comparisons plus plus, we'll get a lot less than 91. We should have 74. So it does a lot less comparisons and a lot less swaps because this is what takes energy, swapping all this stuff, all this data. So number of comparisons is maybe 20 less. So it's not still not that good, but it's less. And it's shorter to write as well. Now, what ha what is happening here? Why is this quicker? Well, the way this uh, version works is it takes an i integer, um, the i index and the j index. And as you can see, it starts at 0. And for every loop of this big one, the outer one, we're going to run through the whole array once. And we're going to start at the i, whatever the i was. So in the first one, we're going to start at 0. So i is 20 and j is 20. So is is 20 uh, bigger than 10? Yes. Then we're going to swap them. All right. Um, is 10 bigger than 30? No. Is 10 bigger than 2? Yes. Swap them. And then it's 2 bigger than 6? No. 2 bigger than 50? No. 2 bigger than 3? So it's going to check the first element until it's with the whole thing until it's the smallest element. So it's, we're going to keep all the smallest elements to the left here in the array. Then the next run, this is the important part because the next run, this is going to be 1. i is going to be 1 and j is going to start at 1. All right. So i is going to be 1 now because the 2 is here now. Uh, i is going to be 1 and j is going to start at 1. So we're going to start from here. So is i bigger than uh, 10 bigger than 30? No. 10 bigger than 2? Yes. Swap them. And then boom, boom, boom. And the next run will start here with both of our, uh, our indexes. So i and j will start here. Check everything until it's sorted. Check everything until it's sorted and so on. So if I just copy paste this beautiful line of code and put it in here and just do this. Just do that. And then we'll run this and we'll see a little bit how it works. So this is every swap. Everything in the beginning is being sorted. You see that? Everything from the beginning is being sorted here. And that's the way this one works. And there isn't really much more to say about that. But this is, as I mean, a little more efficient version of bubble sort. It's nothing special. You don't have to put too much time into this. But if you're supposed to do a bubble sort, or if you want to, if you need to pass your test and you have to make a bubble sort, this version is good. This version is easy to write, it's quick. You don't have to write all this other stuff or number of comparisons for that matter. Just swap and check if it's bigger than uh, its neighbor. And that's it. Guys and girls, that is a uh, optimized version of bubble sort for you. It's nothing special. Uh, kind of slow. Read this. So, so yeah. Okay, nothing more to say about that. <laughs> we'll talk about some other sor sorting algorithms later on and some more data structures as we go along. But until then, uh, thanks for watching. And keep learning. Best of luck. Take care. And I'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Bye-bye.